Welcome to the ClearFly Portal Training, Understanding the Sales Dashboard. My name is Tom Hall, and I will be your host for the next 20 minutes or so. So let's go ahead and get started. So the ClearFly Portal Training session uh, will just cover the sales dashboard. Um, we have other trainings that are scheduled for upcoming times that will go into the other portions of the ClearFly portal, as well as how to build quotes, uh, view proposals, and so forth. Um, <clears throat> but for this purpose, we're just gonna cover this very top section. Um, if you do not have this section or section available in your ClearFly portal, it's because you do not have sales permission. To change that, or if you believe that you need to have sales permission, uh, please reach out to your system administrator or to uh, your account manager within ClearFly's organization. Um, and I'll put their phone numbers and contact names up at the end of uh, this training session. All right, so let's jump right into here. Um, again, just a real, real quick recap. If at any point in time you need to get back to the home screen, the home screen can be done by clicking the ClearFly logo. Um, up in the upper left hand corner. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the sales dashboard. If we click on the sales dashboard, uh, there's gonna be some basic information that gets shown. First off, it's gonna show you your company name. This is a, simply a demo portal, so it is showing my company as ABC Telecom. Um, but again, it's gonna show yours. Uh, it's also gonna show your agent code. Uh, and again, these things are not something that you can you can change. Uh, it's just for reference only. It's also going to show you your uh, primary point of contact uh, within ClearFly. So that's either going to be Bob Jenkins, Sam Johnson, or Rob Lewis. The payout accounts, as you're probably aware, maybe you're not. Uh, ClearFly pays a commission to our partners uh, like yourselves. And uh, this is the account that that money gets deposited to. Um, if you do not have payout account access or permission, you will not be able to click on that link. All right. Rate sheet style full. Uh, I'll cover that here in just a moment. But there's two different types of, of rate sheet styles. There's either full, which is a line item, uh, itemized uh, breakdown of all the ClearFly components. Uh, quantity and price, or rate sheet style summary, which will show the product uh, name or the product type and the quantity, but it will not show the individual prices. Um, it'll also tell you if your account is active, um, which in most cases it is going to be. All right, so that's the upper section here. Um, we will go through the rate sheet style as I mentioned uh, here shortly. This is just your default. So your default, it was probably set by the administrator or by default and it will always be full. Um, if as an organization, do you decide that you wanna have summary, you're simply gonna click the manage button and you're going to change it to summary mode. All right. All right, so if we're looking at the meat of the sales dashboard here, uh, we've got a couple different tabs. We're first going to cover the quotes tab. Uh, the quotes tab here, um, it will show all pending quotes, uh, what pending quotes are. Uh, they're currently in the stage of quoting, which means they have not been completed. So you're currently building those quotes. Um, you're not ready to send them off to the customer. Uh, maybe you're waiting for some additional information. And uh, in this demo here, it is showing that we have two quotes that are currently pending. So quote one and quote two, uh, the stage is quoting. Uh, it shows you the date that they were created and how long they've been in this mode. All right, quotes available. Uh, there's two different stages here. So let's just, uh, let's just take quote two here. And let's move it to available. So now if we go back to the home page, come to the sales dashboard, it now shows pending quotes as one because it's still in quoting mode. 
quote two, we had moved from quoting to available. So it now is showing that it is in a stage available, which means it's ready to be sent to a customer, but it has not been sent to a customer as of yet. Whereas quote four also is showing up as an available quote, but it is committed. That means that we have sent that, that document or that quote to the customer as a proposal. And it's the reason why the next tab shows a one. And uh, we're just waiting for the customer to sign, uh, sign that contract. So that's the really the breakdown. You have two different sections as a recap under the quotes tab, pending quotes, which are still being built, available quotes, which are either built but have not been sent to a customer or they've been built and they've been sent to the customer. And in that case, the stage is going to show as committed. Moving on to the next tab, which is proposals. The proposals tab shows all quotes that have been sent to a customer. Um, in this example here, quote four uh, has been sent to a customer. And at quick glance, we can see the customer e-sign test um, that person has not begun the signing process. All right, so it's currently at 0%. Uh, it was just sent today, so there's for the, the days or the age of that uh, proposal is currently at zero. The rate sheet or the rates tab, um, most of you will have agent rates. So your primary point of contact at Clearfly is going to set your rates. Um, and it's going to give you some flexibility, typically greater than what the global floor or the global rates are going to be at. So, you know, your primary point of contact at Clearfly may have set your Clearphone clear SIP trunks at a rate of $20 to or $18 uh, as a default rate and your floor is 18 bucks. Um, it may set your default rate at $22 and your floor is $20. Again, that's going to be up to your primary point of contact at Clearfly and the folks at, within your organization. All right. So this is just a, a list of rates. If you ever have a customer ask you, oh, so how much is a CFAX? Uh, you can come to this sales dashboard, come to the rates tab, scroll down. And here's all the rates for the CFAX. So if you're looking at a CFAX 250, it's $10, 750, 15, $1,530, and so on and so forth. All right. Um, so there they are. Commissionable accounts, these are all the accounts that your organization is receiving a commission on. Um, so some of you have quite a few. Uh, if you need to sort the columns by name, most of you are not going to know, know the account number unless a customer calls you and says, my account number with Clearfly is SBN00002. Uh, um, most likely, you're going to come over here. You're going to sort by name uh, alphabetically, find that customer, look at their account, okay? It's also going to tell you if the customer is currently under contract. If it's manual review, most likely it has not been processed and they're new. So the services have not been turned up. If it is out of contract, it'll state month to month. All right. The last tab on here is the late accounts tab. So again, because you're receiving commissions, or your organization's receiving commissions, if any of the customers are late on their payment, we're gonna let you know that because that is going to directly impact your commissions. So if any of your customers are late, it's gonna list those out. Uh, just so you're well aware of that, uh, you know, from a sales uh, process uh, in case the customer calls you up, all right? All right, so that is really the sales dashboard. Um, let's go back and take a look at the rate sheet styles. Uh, as I mentioned, I was gonna show you the difference. So let's look at 
we'll look at uh, quote four, uh, the e sign test. So if we open that quote up, and again, I've got another training session scheduled to go over how to build a quote. But uh, just briefly here, if we're looking at this quote, we can see the rate sheet style is currently set as full. If we download the rate sheet and we open that up, knowing that the rate sheet style is full, the first page is really a summary. The second page is what is impacted. So if we look at this, the second page is showing each of the ClearFly products the quantity and the cost, okay? If we go back to that quote and we edit it and change from rate sheet style full to rate sheet style summary, do an update. Now, if we download that rate sheet, it's gonna look a little bit different. Again, the first page is a summary page, so everything's gonna be the same there, but the second page is completely different. Again, we're showing the product name, we're showing the product quantity, but we are not showing the individual prices. Why that may be important if you're in a marketplace that you're worried about being shopped um, or individual line items being compared and you wanna hide that, then the summary view is, is really the best option for you, okay? Um, so that's really the, uh, only other thing that I wanted to cover on this presentation, uh, just a couple other things as far as a recap. If you've been on any of my other presentations, I've kind of emphasized a couple pieces down here in the very bottom footer of the website. And I also want to emphasize the service verification under the quick links. So if you um, are concerned, or maybe have been told that most SIP carriers cannot provide service to a local market that you're quoting into and you want to verify that ClearFly can provide service, if you come to your quick links here, click on service verification, you can enter the customer's zip code or the first six digits of their phone number. Since this is a, a demo portal, it's not going to work, so let me pull over my live portal view. So if I enter my zip code of 89123, uh, I am in Vegas, so that is my zip code, and I hit search, it is going to come up and it's going to show me a green indication that ClearFly can provide service in Las Vegas. All right. If I enter a zip code that does not or is not supported, which is 68840, it is a rural market in Nebraska called Gibbons, or Gibbons, sorry. Um, we cannot, unfortunately, cannot provide service there, uh, primarily because it is an independent rural telco that uh, is literally running a monopoly in that marketplace. And ClearFly cannot get new numbers, nor can we port numbers from there. So it will show you as not supported, all right? Same scenario if you type in your phone number, so if I type in 702-523, hit search, it's gonna come up as Las Vegas and it's gonna say that it's served, okay? The platform section here, ClearFly has two uh, upstream carriers, level three, which is L3, and IntelliQuint, which is gonna be indicated as IQNT, all right? Okay. So that's the service verification. A couple other things on the very bottom uh, that I just want to touch on. Touch on frequently asked questions is a link back to our website, um, and uh, it's going to be a frequently asked questions page that is available and uh, has some really good uh, good answers to some questions that we often get asked. The KB link is a knowledge base. Again, it goes back to our website uh, and there is a knowledge base of some information. So if you ever had a question about the voice activation process or service test numbers, there's an article on here about that. Um, 
the difference between unavailable and unconditional forwarding also there, okay? Um, the blog section is currently not working. We're revamping our website uh, that may possibly go away uh, in the near, very near future. Documents, the only document that is listed here is the service schedule. The service schedule really provides uh, the service level agreements. So if a customer is asking about that, come down to the documents section at the bottom of the portal, download the service schedule and send it off to the customer. Tools is a really useful link here. Um, most of you are currently selling uh, our standard uh, SIP trunks, meaning local and long distance is included. Uh, however, some of you are selling uh, metered trunks, which means local calling is free or included in uh, with the trunks and anything long distance or outside the local calling area is going to be charged a per minute rate. So if you were to click onto that, you would enter the uh, first six digits of the phone number and it's going to tell you the, in, uh, all of the local markets or what would be classified as a local phone call. Other things in the tools, international rates. So if a customer wants to know if they make an international phone call, what that cost is going to be. If they provide you with a specific phone number, you can enter that specific phone number and click, click look up and it will tell you what their rate is going to, or what they're gonna be charged from a rate standpoint. If they wanna download all of the rates, or if you want to, um, you can click download all rates, you'll get a .csv file uh, that will list out all of our international rates. Service verification, we kind of already talked about that. Uh, I wouldn't use the tools link in the bottom. I would just use a quick links um, uh, link over on the left-hand side. Speed test is a speed test directly back to ClearFly's equipment. Um, it's, it's very accurate as far as what uh, the customer can expect anytime they make a phone call from their premise to, um, you know, out, out to, the, to the rest of the world. Uh, being routed through our equipment. So the big thing about the speed test is the speed test is really just a snapshot of time um, and uh, a person's network or a business's network can fluctuate uh, up and down uh, depending on what they have going on. So if you're gonna run a speed test, my recommendation has always been that uh, you run multiple speed tests throughout the day, uh, which will give you a better, better realistic picture of what's happening on their network. Tutorials link here will take you to ClearFly's uh, YouTube channel where all of these recordings, all of these training sessions that have been recorded uh, will be posted here on uh, ClearFly's YouTube channel. Status is incredibly useful, especially if you're getting phone calls from uh, customers saying that they're having some issues. If you scroll to the bottom of the ClearFly portal, click on the status button, it will tell you all of our, our, all of our systems and whether we're having some issues or not issues or if everything's currently operational. So at this, at this uh, time, you can see uh, the ClearFly portal is operational, the voice network is operational, CFAX is operational and so forth. It also lists out any past incidents, all right? Lastly on here is the ClearFly community. So the ClearFly community is, uh, is a bulletin board, uh, I guess you can call it a blog, uh, not really a blog because it's interactive, but if we look at the ClearFly community, it is a place where all of our partners can post suggestions, recommendations, they can post questions, um, for other partners, uh, it is an incredibly, incredibly helpful um, tool for all of our partners. So anything you post here, not only will ClearFly uh, see that, but as will anybody else that is currently using uh, the ClearFly community. So you know, registration outage notification. You know, it was a it was a uh, suggestion. It's been viewed uh, 57 times. There's been five or sorry, 47 times, there's been five replies, and the last time there was activity was 10 days ago. So uh, please make use of that. Most of ClearFly's improvements 
or uh, added features and functions have come from the ClearFly community. So please, you know, feel free to, to reach out and, and log into that by going to the bottom of the ClearFly portal, clicking community. Um, since you're already in the ClearFly portal, it's not going to request that you log in or create a login. Uh, it will know that you're a trusted person and you can, uh, you can post whatever you'd like. Okay, so that's really it, folks. Uh, that is all I really wanted to cover on the sales dashboard. Uh, as I said, we have some additional trainings coming up covering the payout accounts, unified billing dashboard, management dashboard. And if you do not see any of these additional ones uh, when you log into the ClearFly portal, it's most likely because you don't have permission uh, to view those. So just reach out to your account manager or your primary point of contact at ClearFly um, or your system administrator. These are the primary contacts from a sales perspective at ClearFly. Um, again, if once you log into the portal, it will tell you who, you, who your pers person is. Uh, but uh, there's three of them, uh, Sam Johnson, Bob Jenkins, and Rob Lewis. My name is Tom Hall. Uh, my contact information is there as well. If you're unable to get hold of either of those three gentlemen, feel free to reach out to me at any point in time. I'm always available and would be happy to help you out. All right, folks. Well, thank you so much for participating. Uh, if you have any questions, again, just uh, feel free to reach out to us and uh, have a wonderful rest of the day.